Okay, we're going to be taking a very quick whistle stop tour of uh, why I think Scrivener is absolutely the best piece of software for writers, content creators, bloggers, you know, wh whatever field you're in, educators, uh, teachers, students, you name it, you know, if you're an author of any kind, uh, Scrivener is going to really make a difference in your workflow. Okay, we're going to be taking a very quick um, and in your ability stop to tour. quickly and easily develop uh, format and publish your books, whatever the platform, whether it's digital, whether it's print, Scrivener has the ability to take your one manuscript, your one project manuscript, um, and output it in many different forms. Now, obviously, there's a lot of power under the hood here, um, and that's why some people shy away from Scrivener, because when they first come to it, um, it's kind of, man, there's so many different bells and whistles, so many buttons to press here, I don't know where to begin. But really, let me assure you, once you get a hold of uh, how this works, just get, get a hold of the basics. Um, you will wonder how you ever really lived without it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to liberate many people today from uh, the, the tyranny of uh, multiple folders, one for research, one for this, one for that, and unwieldy files, you are going to be able to keep everything in one place. So um, when you first open Scrivener, now I'm working with the Mac version here, uh, the Scrivener Unleashed uh, course covers in detail both the Mac version and the um, Windows version. So don't worry. I know that some courses um, kind of just uh, tag on a few bits and pieces about the Windows version, but uh, our training covers everything in detail, actually using uh, both the Mac version of the software and then all of the videos again using the Windows version. So you Windows PC users, you're covered okay. And many of the things that I cover here, in fact, pretty much all of them are going to be uh, reflected in either version. When you first open Scrivener, uh, you'll be faced with this project template screen. Um, there are various templates that you can use. I've got some of my own bespoke templates as well. I use it for my blogging as well as um, all of my writing, uh, etc. Uh, when you start, you can, uh, they've got an interactive tutorial, uh, user manual, a, a handful of videos. I mean, they really are pretty, uh, uh, pretty limited. Um, but uh, one of the templates that I use a lot is the blank template, uh, just a basic, a white canvas, you know, so um, just a great place to start, particularly uh, when you're first starting with Scrivener, because uh, you're not going to have lots of kind of extra formatting uh, applied to it. It's just a blank template that you can begin to work with straight out of the bag. Um, there's also a number, again, these are my own templates. These come free with the uh, Unleashed training okay so there's uh, the snowflake method is one that i've worked with in the past um, a great method of developing a book but there's a number of different uh templates that you can use and then uh straight out of the box you know without uh, all of those templates scrivener actually comes with a bunch of great stuff anyway so you don't need all of this um really uh, a great template to begin with is the novel template Okay, the novel template uh, also comes with. Let me just open one up. Let's let's just call this novel, and uh, I'll save it to my somewhat cluttered desktop. Okay, and uh, as you can see in the novel format, we've got uh, some. They're, they're even kind enough to include some instructions how to compile and etc. Um, but what I wanted to show you is uh, with the novel template, you also get um, character, um, a section for characters, a section for places, and then templates for both of those, okay? Um, and these templates can be uh, utilized uh, in whatever way you want. You just come up to um, project new from template. And if I go a new character sketch, okay, I can just um, duplicate that, drop it into my character sketch, and then just begin to fill that in. And obviously, you can uh, change up these templates in whatever way you want. 
Um, so uh, that's the novel template. Let me just close this down and let's open a blank template now. Um, and I'll just walk you through uh, the basics. So let's just call this basics. And we'll just create that. Okay. Um, and what this creates basically is um, a project. Okay. Now, uh, a Scrivener project is different to, say, uh, just a Word file, a doc file, in that uh, your project is made up like a binder. It's like a three ring binder where you would um, put all of your different files, but you can also um, organize those files within the binder. So you've got a research folder, uh, you've got trash, but you can also add other things. If I click here, for example, excuse me, let me just remove that. If I click down here, I can add a new folder to my binder. And um, let's say this was my images, okay? Or I could add a folder. Um, of ideas that are outside of my main draft, but it just means that I can keep everything in the same place. Um, there are some, the, just the basic layout of your screen, uh, not difficult to um, get a hold of. You've got a toolbar up here, okay? You've got a toolbar up here. I can right click on that and I can customize this toolbar in whatever way I want. Okay, so um, we can choose to put something on or move something off. So if I just move those off, for example, those are ones that I'd added that I sometimes use and just go done. And then that's reflected here in my toolbar. So you can uh, very much create the workspace that works well for you. OK, you're not you're not duty bound to have all of these different things here. Um, you can work it whichever way you want. Um, and then obviously underneath that, you also have um, this area here. OK, and uh, incidentally, I, let me just quickly just say if you wanted to make changes um, to customize this, in uh, you can do as I did there, just right click on it and customize the toolbar. But um, in the Windows version, you go to tools, options, and then under tools, options, you'll be able to um, change these things up and also change things up here in the format preferences. Now, if I click into my content area, um, this then comes live. Most of you will be very familiar with this kind of thing. Um, the format bar, you can choose your fonts. Um, you can choose your uh, font size, bold, italic, underline, uh, your, your uh, alignment, etc., uh, line heights, uh, different bullet points that you can place in, etc. You can also create um, uh, special formats, okay? So you can create format presets that you can apply directly to your documents um, with great ease. Um, and that's obviously a great uh, way to go about at the beginning of a project, set up your format presets, okay? And um, you can then apply, they will apply to every new document that you create. So um, let's, let's maybe look um, we'll, we'll look at format presets a bit later. Let's just continue looking at the uh, workspace here. Okay, so we've got the toolbar. We've got the format bar here. We've also got, obviously, our content area. This is where our bestseller gets written, actually, here. Um, and then over here, the all-important binder, okay? And the binder area is really where all of your documents, your research, your images, whatever it is you're using in your project is going to be housed somewhere and organized somewhere within this area here. The draft, um, in some templates, it's called the manuscript. You can call it what you like. Um, this is your actual, the text of the document that you will output or compile for publication, okay? And, um, and then over here, if I click this nice big blue eye, okay, I've got um, this area here, which is the inspector. Now, in the inspector, uh, let's say I call this my introduction. I can just 
double click on it and rename it. And then I can put a synopsis on here if I want to. So um, this is my synopsis. Okay. And uh, then if I will, we will look at this later, but if I look um, at my draft folder, that's going to be reflected there in the corkboard. My synopsis, I can also double click here and add to my synopsis or do so over here. Um, you're able to apply labels. You're able to apply status to any of the documents in your um, draft folder. Um, and then there are numerous different things. You can add references. Uh, you can add keywords. You can add metadata for your project. Um, you can take snapshots. So say, for example, you're working on a, a project and you knew you were going to make some extensive changes, but you wanted to um, keep the version that you're, you previously had. You want to have a snapshot of that in case you want to roll back. You can take several snapshots at any time, and that's going to be re reflected here. And you're going to have like a, a carbon copy of your project as it presently stands right now um, here in your snapshot. So I could take a snapshot of this introduction here um, and just click that. Okay. And, um, and then I can roll back to that if I want to. I can compare the two and then roll back to that if I decide I didn't want to make the changes. Um, you can add comments and footnotes here. Um, you're able within Scrivener to add inline comments or um, comments that uh, just appear here over in the inspector. Um, so a number of things that you can do over here in the inspector area. We are going to move on right now and um, look at just simply getting content into your Scrivener project. Now, this is very, very easy, not a difficult thing to do. Um, let me just pull up a few files here that we can work with. OK, now um, there are a number of ways to bring uh, different things into your project. So let's say we started with a blank uh, project just like this. OK, and we wanted to add some files to it. I can, the simplest way is to click this big green button here that adds a new document to my draft folder. So, you know, I could call that chapter one, should I want to. Um, you can also click down here and that's going to do the same thing. Um, but one of the great things that you can do, because um, obviously many of us may already have uh, content elsewhere, we may have it in Microsoft Word or we may have some text files, etc. Um, you can come up here to file, import files. OK, so that's one way to do it. And then uh, you just navigate through to the file that you want to import. Um, or you can simply drag files in. So if I were to drag this text file, this is just a regular text file, I can drag that into my draft folder um, and it just adds it to that folder. OK, now um, I can do the same with a Microsoft Word file, just drag it across and drop it into the draft. It will then convert that file to something that's usable within my Scrivener project. So we'll just give that a moment just to um, draw itself into Scrivener. It just takes a, a little while. And uh, now that's been brought in. As you can see, it's retained um, the formatting that was originally in the um, Word file. Now, that's something that you may want or may not want to do. Um, you can also, um, and there, there are ways to um, bring text in and strip out all of the formatting, okay? And uh, to be honest, sometimes um, it's actually worthwhile just stripping out a lot of the formatting that you may have in a file and just bring it in over as plain text and then applying your formatting within um, Scrivener. Now, one of the great things about Scrivener um, is that you are able to 
choose in your preferences um, how you want your formatting to be. You can actually set default formatting. Every time you open a new document, every time you add a new document or create a new document, it will apply your default style to that document, which is something um, just really, really useful. Again, just uh, uh, makes things much very easy and very quick for you. Um, and we do cover all of that in the Get Started uh, part of the Scrivener Unleashed course um, and go into much greater depth in the Scrivener for Mac and Scrivener for Windows versions of that. Okay, so now we've got some uh, files in our Scrivener binder. Okay, we've created some, we've imported some, we've dragged and dropped some in. Um, and then obviously we now may want to format um, these uh, pieces of text okay now formatting text is uh, very very familiar to most of us you can just highlight the text you want to you can change the font size you can change the you can make it bold italic underline um, you can give it different orientation or uh, alignment sorry um, you can change your line heights so there are number numerous different ways in which you can um, apply uh, formatting you can also apply preset formats if i make that a heading for example i can do so or a subheading and you can create your own format presets which is um, something very very useful uh, let me show you how to right now certainly one of the easiest ways is to um so let's say this were the formatting that i wanted okay i want adobe caslon regular 14 point um i can select some text okay and then i just go up to um format formatting and i can do um a preset a new preset from selection okay I can then name that preset so I just call that body text new for example I can include the font font size uh, so there are different things you can do okay that now if I go here and I were to select all of this text that I pulled in from my word document I can just click on this little a button up here and I can go, look, you can see my body text new that I just created. And I just click that. And immediately it's changed all that text to reflect the preset that I just created. Okay. You can also, so let me come up here to um, preferences. Okay. Now in um, the Windows version, you would go to tools options. Um, and you can choose formatting here okay and you can go use formatting in current editor okay um we've got our adobe caslon we've got 1.2 etc um and we can make this our default text style okay i can also change things up in here if i wanted to um and uh we can uh, these options it says here will take effect for new documents so I can set a default text style, okay, in my preferences or my options. And uh, when I create a new document, it's going to be reflected It takes on my default styles. Now, um, that's obviously um, something that's well worth doing at the very beginning of your project. Um, just get your styles in place and your preferences if there are specific styles that you want to work with. Um, and then you can, um, it's going to apply that style automatically every time you create a new document. Now, you can also copy and paste styles from um, document to document in your Scrivener project. Um, and you can, uh, there, there's a way to copy from one uh, source, uh, say, for example, a Word document. You can copy from a Word document. Um, and when you paste it in, you can paste matching styles. So, I mean, let's let's just try that. 
Uh, so let me say um, I've got this Word document again, and I copy that. Now, if I were to uh, simply paste that, so just Control um, Command V, okay, um, it obviously uh, retains the styles from that document. But if I if I go now to edit, okay, and I I go paste and match style. You've also got a quick key here, um, option, shift, command, V, okay? If I just do paste and match style, what that does is it strips all of that um, extra formatting that we didn't want straight out of it and will reflect the, uh, the formatting of the particular document that you're pasting into. Um, again, just a really great uh, feature of Scrivener um, just to make your workflow easier so you're not having to go through all of your different documents and change everything up bit by bit. You can do it uh, very quickly and very easily in numerous different ways. And that's one of the things that I really love about Scrivener is the, is just how flexible it is and how it's been designed to work um, not against you, but work with you. You'll find the things that work well for you. Now, um, another great um, feature of Scrivener, um, and this is something that uh, you will really grow to love, I think, is that you can view your document in different ways. So if I choose my top-level draft document here, um, you can look at it in Scrivenings, okay? So let's say I were creating a, um, a book and it had several chapters, but I wanted to be able to read through those chapters as one document. I can literally um, just click on the top level folder and it, the, all of the documents within that folder are gonna be reflected in essentially one long document that I can read through without all the breaks, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you can read through and make sure that the flow of things is working well. Okay, you can also, of course, look at individual documents um, so you're not overwhelmed by masses of text. And that's, you know, I, I know people who even build, um, they'll have a folder for each chapter, and then within each chapter, they'll have a um, just a single document for each scene of that chapter, and then you can move those scenes around within that chapter, you know, so you can actually build your book, you can build out, whether it's a non-fiction book, whether it's a fiction book, you can build it out piece by piece, and then arrange it in the way that you want, after the event, no copying and pasting, no getting confused, no getting mixed up. Everything is so easy to um, just take a hold of, rearrange, and then you can just move it back if you don't want to. You can also nest documents, etc. But we won't we won't go there just now. So if I choose that top level draft folder again, I can look at an outline. And uh, within this outline, I can see if things have got a label or a status. I can also add other, um, I could do a word count. Okay, so I can look and I can see these different word counts here. Um, I can add uh, character counts. I can look at the uh, total word count for my um, project, um, et cetera. There are a number of things. I can have targets set for each of my, uh, you know, if I were working towards a certain word target each day, I can set word targets on a, um, a project by project basis and look at my progress, numerous things, okay? And then we have um, what is called the cork board. Now the cork board is um, just a really fantastic um, way to quickly develop out your books and your ideas. Um, it's a place that you can brainstorm um, and uh, just, I, I use it to um, just quickly develop out sometimes the structure of my book. Um, incidentally, uh, you can also import, we looked at importing, you can also import uh, mind map files um, and Scrivener will develop an entire um, structure of chapters and sub chapters and sub documents etc um, directly from 
your mind map. Just a, another awesome feature, one that I use. I use um, something called, um, what's my mind map software called? Mind Node. Okay, so I use um, a program called Mind Node, um, and I can output from that as an OPML file. And then when I bring that into Scrivener, um, it reflects the structure of my. Uh, mind map entirely, but sets it up here in my draft with folders and sub um, documents, etc. Very, very powerful. Another way that I uh, quickly develop out my books, though, is to just come here into Corkboard and um, I can just begin to. So let's say I were doing um, a, a book on prayer. Okay, I do a lot of Christian based books. Um, that's really my. My heart passion, if you like. Um, and so I could do my first chapter and I could call this um, Faith and then just quickly add a synopsis or uh, my just, just even just for my own um, idea. Okay, so this is going to be about. Um, and here, like, let's say we call chapter two Hope. The blueprint of things expected. Um, and then let's call this one uh, Love. The motivation to pray. Uh, I can also right click and just move. Let's move these ones to the trash. Okay. And so I've quickly built out um, a structure for my book. I can move them around so I can. You know, if I think, all right, I think that that one would be better there. I might have hope first or whatever. And that's, again, going to be reflected in my structure over here. As you can see, any of the files that have a synopsis are reflected by this little card feature here. Okay. Um, and you can also see they've got that. But what it's telling me is this has got a synopsis, but it's got no text. Okay. So if I add some text. That little icon has now changed and is reflected. And it's telling me that this um, file now has text on it, in it, okay, that you can utilize. Now, one of the nice things that I utilize a lot here in the corkboard version is adding labels and statuses, particularly statuses. So let's say this introduction um, I had completed. OK, um, I can come up here to view. And let me have a look. I want to be able to show status stamps. OK, so I've just come up to view um, and corkboard options, show status stamps. I want to be able to see these um, at a glance. This one here needs some work. OK, so let's say it's to do. And then this one here is just my first draft. OK, um, and let's let's just say this one's done. OK, and as you can see, I'm, I'm looking at my um, documents here, my book. And if I think, OK, well, now what do I need to work on? What needs to be revised? I can quickly just jump over to my corkboard area here. OK, I've got my different ones. I can see that I want to work on this particular um, file here. Love. I just choose it over here. It's automatically going to change me into Scrivener view. OK, and I can just get in there and begin to work on that particular file. So um, hopefully that uh, is uh, you can see the potential in that. OK, something else that I want to quickly show you that I think will be helpful in your projects is the ability to also not just bring in your text files, okay? Not just bring text files in, but bring in anything that you need to, okay? So let's let's just come here. Um, I can, this is an MP3 file. I can drag that directly into my research folder. Oh, hang on, let me just choose that.
So in that, I could have um, audio files, either in, for my own inspiration. They could just be uh, audio files that I've taken on my phone or my Dicta phone and um, just throw into the Scrivener project. Uh, you know, I can actually record ideas, keep them all in the same project. And again, this is something so powerful with Scrivener. Instead of having files here, there, and everywhere scattered across your hard drive, everything can be in one place. Audio files, video files, text files. You can drag even video files in there. So if I bring this video file across, um, again, I can then watch that uh, directly in the Scrivener window here. Now, the, the Windows version is not uh, quite as uh, well formed as the Mac version in some respects. Um, so uh, some of the media files will play externally, um, but it still works. You know, you can still do all of this. I can drag text files in. I can drag PDFs in. So if I were to drag this um, PDF over here, okay, so this is a an entire book. And then again, look at, I can look through that book very, very easily within Scrivener, okay? Um, a very nice way. I mean, say, for example, this were some of my research. Um, I can click here on this little um, box here, okay? So I can split my screen. Let me just pull this out a little. Okay, and then when I choose a screen, I could be working on a document here and I can have a separate document down here that is my research. Okay, and then I can just uh, actually refer to my research directly and um, work on my actual document up here. Just a great way, again, that Scrivener um, keeps everything in one place and helps you with a very, very productive workflow. Uh, something else that's quite nice, uh, let me just bring up uh, um, a website of mine. Okay, so here we are in a, a website of mine. Let me look at this particular uh, piece of... Okay, so I've got a, a document in here, a blog post in here. I can drag this. I can take a hold of this little icon here, okay? So just take a, a hold of that little icon and I can drag it across, drop it into my research folder. And what Scrivener is now doing, it's actually pulling that directly into my Scrivener project. Again, just an amazing way to um, bring content into your Scrivener, particularly if you're doing research. Um, and just, you know, I've now got that as a reference directly in my Scrivener document. I don't even have to go to um, the internet. I don't have to go to Safari or wherever to um, look at that. So again, just a, another great feature. So that's your research folder. And um, there's probably a lot more to that that we could look at. Um, but uh, just some helpful tips that will uh, allow you to um, just get, get to up to speed quickly with how to bring research into your folders. And of course, these could be, um, I you can bring images in if I had a JPEG. So that, here's a PNG. Um, again, I can drag that into that folder. Um, and those, they, they can go anywhere at all. Like I could actually just drag that down into my images folder and I could have an images folder right here. Okay. Just with all of the images that I want to utilize in my project. Um, there's no there's no real right or wrong as to how you organize your binder. You know, it's really going to work for you. And some writers that I know um, have very, very complex uh, structures and folders within their binder um, that allow them to develop out, you know, huge projects, novels, um, manuscripts, dissertations, whatever it may be, right here all within one place and they can have all of their research they can have all of their manuscript they can have all of the various images web pages pdfs videos audios 
right here in their Scrivener project. Very, very powerful. Um, just, uh, just, yeah. You, you are not going to find another piece of software that has so much under one umbrella um, and that will allow you to actually utilize all of those features with such incredible ease. Once you get used to this, um, you, like I say, you will never, ever look back. This is by far the best writer's software on the market by, by leagues and leagues and leagues. Okay, the next thing I want to look at, um, and this is another way to bring um, things into your um, Scrivener project and something definitely worth um, just mentioning is something called the scratch pad. Now, the scratch pad is going to allow you to actually add uh, items to your uh, Scrivener project without actually even being in your Scrivener project. Um, to activate this on the PC, you go to Tools, Scratch Pad, or in the Mac version, if I go to Window, okay, and then just go Show Scratch Pad. And then I've got this here, okay, wow, my friend's name, Michelle Spiva. Okay, um, and I can add notes directly to my um, project. So let's call this note note one. Um, and I could uh, literally uh, copy and paste anything into here. So let's say I were, um, my project were closed down um, and I were doing some research on the internet. Okay, so let's go to um, Wikipedia or um, let's just bring up, oh, let's bring up this another one of my websites okay um let's have a look and let's say this were something that i wanted to bring across into my so i'll copy that and then i'm going to paste that into that um, note and then down here you can see it says send to project so I'm going to send it to my basics project. I can append it so I can add it to a, an existing um, document within my project, or I can just add it directly to, um, so into, I can just bring it in as a sub document of my research or wherever it may be, my ideas folder. So let's put it in my ideas folder. Okay. And then I'll okay that. Now, if I go back to my Scrivener project, you can see that that has now been added to my Scrivener project. Okay, so that's just window, sorry, window, show scratch pad, and I can add as many notes as I want to. So I can add several notes um, and add them directly into my project very, very easily. Just a great way um, as you're uh, maybe outside of Scrivener, you're not working within the actual project itself, but you can still add your notes without having to open, even open the Scrivener project and paste them in there. Scratchpad um, is tools, Scratchpad on the PC or window, show Scratchpad on the Mac. Uh, we have looked at this, um, but again, it's definitely worth um, looking at. Uh, you can rearrange your files within the draft or in indeed in any folder, okay? You can drag a file. So let's say this note one was something that I decide I want to actually bring into my main manuscript. I can just grab it, okay? So I click on it and I hold and I can just drag it up and drop it in there. I could even drag an entire folder and drop it in to my draft. I can also drag things back out, obviously, and just drop them there back outside. If they're outside of my draft folder, they're not going to be included when I actually compile my, um, my project for publication. So um, as to, like I say, everything in one place, but very well organized. Let's just close those down. You can see it's not complicated. It's not complex. It's not, um, it's not confusing. 
Okay. Now, another um, feature of Scrivener, and one that you may use, particularly if you are outputting for um, different uh, different purposes. Okay. Now, let me just open the novel file that we started earlier, because this will already have this here for us. Thankfully, Scrivener will back up your project. Um, it will auto save as you're working on it, and then it will back up your project as you're working on it. But one of the things that I wanted to show you quickly here is um, something called front matter. Now, with front matter, what you're allow what um, Scrivener will allow you to do is to have different front matter for each of your uh, different manuscripts. So, for example, let's say I were going to compile this um, for as a manuscript. Okay, um, let's jump into the compile feature quickly. Um, and this sometimes is where people um, get a little bit intimidated, um, but please don't worry. The the compiling is actually very, very easy within Scrivener. Um, and, uh, you know, we have detailed instruction in the Scrivener Unleashed training, um, how to compile for digital, how to compile for print, etc. You just click the compile button here, and then you can format in any way that you want. So let me say I were going to, I wanted to format this as a proof copy. Okay, so let's say I wanted to format as a proof copy um, and I wanted to, um, I can choose the separators. So between each of the files or the scenes in my manuscript, I can just have an empty line or I can have a page break, um, etc. So let's just put empty lines in there at the moment. But what I wanted to highlight to you was the ability to then um, choose what front matter you want to use. So I can add the front matter from my manuscript in this proof copy. And then when I output that, if I compile that now, so let me just output this to my desktop. And if I now open that, okay, it's added this these details okay and uh, obviously there's no content in here but it added those details now if i compile now for me compile again but this time i'm going to compile as an ebook okay and i'm going to add my ebook front matter okay and i'm going to just compile that and i'm going to throw this onto let's Let's compile it as um, a Kindle book because we'll be able to preview that very, very easily. And on my separators, I want a section break between everything. And we'll just compile this now. Export. Okay. I now have um, a .mobi file. And as I open that up now, um, as you can see, it's pulled in a cover. Okay. Obviously, that cover is here in my ebook front matter. Now I can uh, add whatever cover I want. Obviously, that would be my own image. It automatically creates the table of contents. Now we've not got a lot happening here. Um, but you would have uh, your clickable table of contents automatically created by Scrivener when you compile for Kindle. You don't have to worry about uh, H1, H1 headings and all of that stuff that you need to do in Word. This is going to do everything for you. And I can just click on that. And then it's brought in my dedication page. Okay. And... and then into my chapter one, okay? Um, again, you can do the same for print, okay? So if I went here and I chose, um, let's say we wanted to do a paperback novel, okay? 
I'm going to have a page break between all of those. And uh, then I choose for, for my front matter, I want my paperback novel. It's going to, I can either print it or PDF. So I'm going to choose PDF. Now, there are a number of different things. You can choose different page settings, et cetera, your page setups. Um, and uh, we go through that in, in detail in the training. Um, and then compile this as a PDF. Okay, so I'll output that. Okay, and then over here, I've now got a PDF. And let me just bring this over. And it's brought in the front matter, okay, from this folder here. So not only do I have my manuscript, okay, so the manuscript is going to be the same. It's going to be reflected in each of my different formats, whether for digital or print. But rather than having to create several versions, okay, of the same manuscript, I can just have separate front matter and then specify what front matter I want to bring in and append to my main manuscript when I actually compile the book. Okay. Now, uh, in the training, uh, there are a number of uh, different places where I walk through all of the elements of creating a book for digital, creating a book for print, um, some of the issues that mess around that concerning uh, images and image sizes, image resolutions, etc. Uh, we also cover in obviously much more detail uh, front matter um, and uh, all of those things that sometimes can seem very complex or complicated are actually made extremely simple when you know how to do it. Okay. Now, outputting for um, Kindle, you've just seen me output a Kindle book. I mean, it wasn't really a book to speak of. Um, but literally, seriously, if you've got a, um, a book or you've got a manuscript that you want to output, in fact, let me just... Let me just quickly open a new project. So this is a project that I'm presently working on, okay? Um, and I just want you to see how easy it is to output, say for Kindle, which is something that many of us would want to do. Now, this is not a book that I have completed yet, but let's just say it were, okay? Um, I've got my title page. my copyrights and my dedication here, etc. Okay. I also want to um, quickly drag in um, a JPEG for the cover. So let me just do that. I've got a cover here uh, that I've been working on. Okay. So I've just dragged that, literally just dragged and dropped it into um, my folder. And now I choose my draft, click on compile. I'm going to compile this as a Kindle book, okay? I don't need to change any of this. I'm not working with front matter in this particular version, so I've not got that complexity, okay? I just started with a completely blank document, okay? In my separators, I want to separate each of the um, basically, what this means is that it's going to put a page break between each of the individual documents in my manuscript, which is what I want. Okay, now, if you were building um, folders here for each chapter and then um, a, a document for each scene, you might want to just have an empty line between each document, okay, that's adjacent to one another. I don't. I've done each chapter as a separate document. Um, I want to choose a cover, so I'll choose the cover that I just brought in there, okay? On the formatting side of things, um, what, you, what this will allow you to do, it will um, actually add the title to your manuscript, so you can have the titles pulled in like this. I don't want that. I just literally want the text on the page. I'm going to add my own titles on the pages, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, again, this is something that you will work with a little bit, um, not difficult, sometimes a little bit complicated, um, 
But if you just uh, find a simple process and a simple uh, setup that works well for you on one document, you can apply it to all of your documents. I generally work just straight out and just have the text, just the text from the documents and set up my own titles on the pages. But that's just my preference. Um, I can have um, D Scrivener convert links to um, HTML links, okay, if I wanted to do that. Um, and uh, that's something that I generally do. So say I link to some of my other books, etc. cetera, um, it will automatically create those links through to those books, okay, or whatever, wherever it's linking to your website, your author site, etc. cetera. Uh, I don't need to worry about any of this. Um, I've not added footnotes uh, um, and uh, or inline annotations if I were, I could remove those footnotes, I could override the font of those footnotes, etc. Um, and I can have an end page with those notes on and I can give that end page a title. Again, not something I'm working with. Um, I can change up my metadata here. Uh, this will appear at the top of the page. It's automatically pulling in the title of my um, document. So I've got my draft here and I called this Scrivener project 31 days releasing creativity. Let's say that's the title I wanted or I can add a custom title here just by typing it in. I can add the author's name. Um, nothing else really needs to be added here unless you want to, um, but it's not necessary. Kindle Gen is something that you will need to have installed, but um, it's got a link through to do so. You just click on that, add it, um, and then it will uh, see where it is. It will know where it is. You don't need to do that again. That's um, or once you've done it once, it's done. You don't need to worry about it. Okay. And so I've created all of my. As you can see, I needed to change very little, if anything, from the default that I have within um, Scrivener. So just going to um, choosing ebook. Okay. Uh, it's it's changed it to custom because I changed up some of my separators, etc. Um, so that's the, the only few changes I've made. And then I go compile. Okay, it's going to ask me, where do you want to save this? Let me just throw it onto my desktop. It's compiling that book. then I can bring that across and let me just open that up now in my Kindle previewer okay now we've got our newly output Kindle book if I go here it's pulled the cover in okay um, it's got my table of contents now I did ha I had to do nothing at all I could just simply press compile and Scrivener took care of everything for me. All of my um, chapters are clickable links, which will take people directly to that page. Okay. And then it's dropped in all of my um, text. Okay. All of my formatting, all there uh, as it should be. I can upload this file directly to Amazon to the KDP site. Uh, it will work perfectly. I've literally um, uploaded hundreds of books, okay, that I've output from Scrivener in this way, and I've never had a problem with any of them, okay? Scrivener really is, quite honestly, the quickest and easiest way to develop and to um, output and to upload your books to um, Kindle bar none. There's nothing easier. You know, there are all sorts of different softwares out there. There are all sorts of different um, people who will say format this and do that and put your H1s and your H2s and your H3s and whatever it may be and different, you know, you don't need to worry about any of that if you're using Scrivener. You know, if only for the Kindle versions of your books, um, the 40 or $50 that Scrivener costs is going to save you hundreds of hours of frustration when it comes to outputting your books for Kindle. So, um, I mean, I know that that was a very kind of quick walkthrough, so do forgive me. We cover things in much more detail and go through it uh, in much 
greater clarity in the actual training uh, in Scrivener Unleashed. Um, but you can see just how easy that was. That was not difficult at all. Now, let me uh, now just show you one more thing quickly uh, before we wrap up. Um, another one of my favorite uh, features of Scrivener is just the distraction free mode. Okay, so um, being able to actually work on a document without all of this distraction. If you've got a desktop that looks anything like mine, if you've got an office, and I'm glad I'm not on webcam that looks anything like mine, um, you will know what distraction means. But uh, Scrivener is even going to help you to escape that. I can just click here and I can simply just everything else can disappear. Now, one of the great things in distraction free mode is I can uh, choose down here to scale my text up. Okay. So I can work on the text bigger. Now, this has not changed the size of the text in my actual document. It's just changing the way I look at it. I can position the paper where I want. So I could have the scratch pad up here with some of my um, notes or whatever um, and have my text. I generally just have it if I'm working directly on my documents um, in distraction free mode. I just have it right in the center of the screen. OK, I can also keep bringing up my <laughs> um, I can also change the width of that should I want to. OK, very easily. I can also go to another file in there very, very easily. OK, just down here and choose what file I want to work on. So simple um, and just a great I call it distraction free mode. Um, some people call it full screen mode. Some people call it composition mode, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's just a wonderful way because at the end of the day, do you mean we've covered so many different things about Scrivener in this um, hour together? And, uh, you know, I've tried to cover as much as I possibly could. Please forgive me for uh, just dumping so many different things on you at one time. Let me assure you again once you get a hold of the basics of how this uh, wonderful software can help you develop your books, format your books, publish your books, you will never, ever look back. But at the end of the day, it comes down to this, your writing. We want to help you to um, develop your writing, okay? And uh, this distraction-free uh, environment that Scrivener allows you to just uh, go into at will, okay? So I can just click at the click of a button. Suddenly, my writing is front and center. And so can yours be, and you can develop your book in here, and then you can just come back out and you can begin to make whatever changes you want to, move things around, uh, apply whatever formatting you want. And then, like I say, you can output for ebook, you can output for print, you can output a proof copy. Um, if you're writing scripts, scripts or screenplays, there's even templates for that right here within Scrivener. You can output just your synopsis and your titles if you wanted an outline or just the basic outline, just your title, um, just your synopsis, etc. Just an amazing piece of software. I really want to say thank you again. OK, for taking the time to just have a look um, and as I've whistle stopped through some of the amazing features of Scrivener um, and I wish you all the best. I wish you well in your writing and your content creation projects. You know, just uh, thanks again. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you want to take uh, opportunity to grab this special deal, OK, um, then do so right now. Uh, I can't promise that this price will be the same price forever. OK, um, there's a lot. You get so much value for what you pay. Honestly, you um, we will over deliver for you. 
okay whether you're on mac whether you're on pc um you, it's you're covered okay um and i'm here personally to help i do my utmost to help everyone who jumps on board um, to get to grips as quickly as possible with what they can do with Scrivener and how it can help them in their publishing uh, projects. Okay, uh, we have hundreds. Uh, in fact, we have uh, over th a thousand students who are already enjoying the benefits of using Scrivener. It's no longer just sat on their hard drive somewhere gathering dust. It's been fired up. Um, and it's helping them drastically increase their productivity and their ability to successfully publish. And it can do the same for you. I'm absolutely convinced. Okay, uh, I'm David Lee Martin. I just want to say thanks again and goodbye. Hopefully, this has been a, a helpful introduction for you.